Rosette succulents are easy care plants that not only resemble flowers, they also bloom beautifully. Overlapping leaves make rosette succulents resemble daisies, camellias, or, no surprise, roses. Here, lavender roses in a wedding display combine with similar Echeveria Lola rosettes. But a lot of people come into succulents and find an interest in succulents because they look like roses. So look at the rose here, the climbing rose, next to the Echeveria imbricata, which repeats beautifully, just a little touch of pale pink on the leaf tips. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. I'm a garden photojournalist and author who specializes in succulents. In this video, I'll share with you some of the best garden beds and planters I've seen that feature rosette succulents. To spark your creativity and help you enhance your own garden, you'll see those that thrive in pots and gardens and combine well with each other. I've labeled the main ones in the corresponding gallery on my site, DeborahLeeBaldwin.com. This looks like the owner didn't separate the plants before putting them in the ground from their nursery pots. That's okay, but you do have the option to pull nursery plants apart and mix them. A lot of rosette succulents when they come in nursery pots are rooted cuttings. So you just get a bunch of small plants. These succulents in a big shallow pot look similar, but their colors vary from shades of blue to rose red. The secret to keeping Graptopetalums, Sedums, Echeverias, and their hybrids colorful is to give them full sun for most of the day. Crowding them keeps their stems and roots cool and shaded. For a magazine article we worked on featuring her succulent designs, Laura Eubanks created this potted garden. The focal point, a dwarf Euphorbia milii, suggests a flowering tree. Laura added cuttings of sedum blue spruce, ripple jade, sedums, and graptocedums. Aeonium Irish bouquet at center has clusters of dime-sized green rosettes, Roxland contrast, and support mounded soil. In a jewel box garden Laura created for yours truly, red aloe Dorothea contrasts with yellow jade, graftocetum and calanchoe cuttings, adramiscus, Irish bouquet, ripple jade, and light blue aloe brevifolia. This Orange County garden is by landscape designer Mike Pyle, co-host of HGTV's Inside Out. A different photo of the same garden graces the cover of my book, Designing with Succulents. In addition to foxtail agaves and big green aeoniums, Mike grouped Violet Queen and Pearl von Nuremberg echeverias, coppertone stone crop, and kiwi aeoniums. This bed includes blue fescue, which is an ornamental grass, and daimondia, which has slender leaves that are white on their undersides. Neither the fescue nor the daimondia is a succulent, yet because they don't need a lot of water, they're considered companion plants. Here's an example of a type of succulent that looks like a bouquet. It's a tight colony of Aeonium zwartkop, commonly called black rose. Bright green Senecio vitalis, which has slender, finger-like leaves, makes dark red rosettes pop. Agave desmetiana variegata completes a vignette that makes me hear music. I planted cuttings of another kind of aeonium atop a retaining wall near a sitting area. Like most stem succulents, big green aeoniums are super easy to start from cuttings. Simply snap or snip the stem a couple of inches below the base of the rosette and anchor it in soil. Roots will grow on the stem. I planted a young Bocarnia ricurvata atop a mound, then tucked cuttings of a rosette succulents into the soil around the base. This is how they looked when they were planted and several weeks later. 
It's visually effective to combine multiples of large rosette succulents, too. Soft-leaved agave attenuata is one of the best. Its common name is foxtail agave because of its arched, fluffy flower spikes. A downside to foxtails is that they're frost tender. And typical of the genus agave, they do die after blooming, but that doesn't happen for a decade or more. Use variegated succulents if available. They're much more interesting than their solid colored cousins. This variegated agave attenuata has almost no chlorophyll. That makes it more vulnerable to sunburn, but it's fine here in a mild maritime garden. In the foreground is variegated paddle plant, Calanchoe luciae, fantastic. In another part of the same garden, silvery gray rosettes of Crassula falcata stand out against burgundy bromeliads. In the foreground, flowing around the Calanchoe, is Crassula campfire. If you live where temperatures drop well below freezing, below zero for that matter, and nights don't rise much above 70 degrees Fahrenheit, you likely can grow a wide variety of Semper vivums. Also called hens and chicks or house leeks, these small succulents resemble tight roses. Leaf tips are pointed but not prickly. Sun helps bring out their red and purple hues. Rounded leaves of a zonal geranium contrast with the sword-like leaves of agave angustifolia variegata. Having two variegates that both are white and dark green creates a striking repetition. Here's Aeonium sunburst with a similarly variegated Plectranthus, a perennial that's a good companion plant for succulents. These are Agave Victoria Regine. Dwarf agaves are good in flower beds and containers because most get no larger than soccer balls. Here, Salmon Pink Graptocetum California Sunset is the color complement of blue-gray agave Kichi Jokan. You can't beat blue and orange. Here's the variegate of that same agave with Coppertone Stone Crop. Display gardens at Waterwise Botanicals Nursery near San Diego show taller plants in back, shorter in front. Drifts of easy grow succulents include Lampranthus deltoides, Campfire crassula, Graptopetalum paraguayense, some of it crusted, a blue Cedavaria, and Sedum ruprotinctum. Whether the composition continues to look good depends on how big the plants will get and how fast. Here, agave perii truncata will soon be engulfed by elephant's food and sticks on fire euphorbia. This in-ground bouquet has lasting power. None of the plants will quickly take over. Red edges of Crassula clavata echo the red leaves and flowers of a dwarf euphorbia milii. Chartreuse Sedum angelina flows around Lavender Echeveria shaviana. Horticulturist Jim Gardner positioned mangabes, agaves, and aloes, keeping in mind how big they'll get. For the finishing touch in beds of rosette succulents, instead of rock top dressings, use fine textured succulents that spread, like this small leaved sedum. Agaves that pup, meaning they send up new plants from lateral roots, can be a nuisance or a blessing. Here, pups of agave lofantha quadricolor have managed to fill a bed with no help at all from the garden's owners. This pup was palm-sized when I surrounded it with othona cuttings. Othona, a trailing low-growing succulent with bean-like leaves, is commonly called little pickles. I like how its yellow daisy-like flowers echo the agave's yellow stripes. Here, agave lofantha quadricolor contrasts in color and form with multiple rosettes of Graptocetum vera higgins. To lend height to a bed of rosette succulents, I added a two-foot-tall pot planted with sedum hybrids and trailing othona. On the left are Echeveria blue sky. Like agaves, aloes have pointed leaves, which makes their rosettes star-shaped. This is aloe spectabilis on a slope. It goes without saying, use large succulents in areas viewed from a distance and smaller ones in intimate areas like patios. 
This living bouquet in a pedestal pot holds mainly small aeoniums and echeverias. Trailing succulents include a senecio on the left and on the right, ripsilus. Barrel cacti provide texture, spherical forms, and a butter yellow color, all of which contrast with red paddle plants, blue echeverias, and chartreuse, sedum, angelina. When combining a cactus with rosette succulents, plant it higher so water drains away from its roots. What do you think of this? Surrounding a century plant is dainty alyssum, a spring blooming annual that recedes. This is not a long term pairing. The agave will be alone when the flowers fade in summer. Much longer lasting is a similar combo starring Agave Americana Mediopicta alba. The white striped succulent stands out against dark red aeoniums. In the foreground is red leaved Crassula platyphylla. Foxtail agaves next to large red pots show how it's possible to create an eye-catching garden vignette with just a few succulents and unplanted containers. Here with agave attenuata is a versatile succulent shrub that's one of my favorites, Aeonium kiwi. A light-centered kiwi graces this shady garden bed. On the left are trailing geraniums. Given more sun, Rosettes of Aeonium kiwi will redden. Kiwi is likely the variegate of Aeonium haworthii. The solid colored succulent shrub suggests a mass of gray green flowers. Here it's alongside Cotyledon orbiculata in bloom. In this curbside bed, Aeoniums play second fiddle to blue Senecio mandrillisae. Or maybe it's the Senecio that's the backup singer for the Aeoniums. Echeveria crimson tide suggests a camellia or an ornamental cabbage. Next to it is light blue Echeveria runyoni. The ultimate no flower flower bed emphasizes Echeverias. I don't plant mine in the open garden because their leaves damage easily. Instead, I have a potted Echeveria garden on my deck that enhances the view from indoors. It is celebrating its one year anniversary after being planted. Some of these gorgeous plants are Dick Wright hybrids. Others came from Altman plants and mail order through Mountain Crest Gardens. It's not a lot of care once you get the plants and plant them. Here's how it looked a year ago. All I did was pull off, just gently tug off the dry lower leaves. Find additional information in the video description and on the corresponding page of my website, which includes helpful links and a gallery of plants, all ID'd. My goal is to inspire you to enjoy using succulents in fun and creative ways in your own garden and outdoor living spaces. Please know I appreciate your comments and do subscribe and hit the like button. I'm Deborah Lee Baldwin. Thank you for joining me.